Look at new me, it's really still the real me. I swear you gotta feel me before they try and kill me. They gotta make some choices, they run it out of options. Cause I've been going off and they don't know when it's time to me. Hey guys, it's Julia. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my July installment episode, whatever you want to call it, of new makeup releases, favorites, and fails. So I'm gonna be going through all the new makeup products that are new to the market that I tried out this month and giving you guys my full final thoughts on each of these products. It's a really great way for me to kind of consolidate all the reviews into one big video rather than having individual reviews for everything, which would take forever. A lot of the products in this video are actually things I've used on camera in different videos this month. So some of these are follow-ups or first impressions, but mostly it's just a consolidation of all the new releases and new products that I tried out this month. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is my third time filming this one because something goes wrong every single time. So if you're seeing this footage, that means it went right this time finally, but um, I'm really hoping to have this one up on August 1st. It might be August 2nd, hopefully not the 3rd, but, but yeah, I'll try to be better with the timeline next month. I've gotten so much love and good feedback from you guys on this series, so I am making it a monthly thing. I hope you guys enjoy it, and let's get right into it. I'm just gonna start off with probably the biggest launch of the entire month, which was the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina palette. My full Norvina review video went up right before this one. It's a 25 minute long video, very, very in depth, goes super in depth into every single aspect of this palette. I did swatches, I did looks, I did comparisons with other palettes to see if I could find dupes. Um, so yeah, that goes really in depth. If you wanna see my full thoughts on that palette, go ahead and watch that one. But I'll just give you guys a little snippet of my thoughts here. I really do enjoy this one. I'm very glad that I have it in my collection. There's definitely some really unique shades in here and I feel like it's making a contribution to my collection, giving me something I didn't already have. I also love that it's really versatile. You do have some beautiful purple shades in here, but you also have pinks, you have neutrals. You can create so many different looks with this one and I've been able to create a bunch of different looks that look like they're spanning multiple different palettes, but it's all in this one palette here. So I really love the versatility of this one. Overall, I find the formula to be very consistent with what's in the Modern Renaissance and the Soft Glam palette. So if you really like Anastasia's shadows, I think you'll really enjoy the Nervina palette. I believe it's already launched in Ulta, coming very soon to Sephora, so I just, I really like this palette. I'm glad that I bought it, um, and I know that some people have been kind of feeling negative things about this one, but I like this one. I love the looks I've been able to create with this one, and I will continue to be using it on my Instagram and here on my channel as well, so you will see this one in the future. But overall, just one of my favorite things I've tried in July, and if, again, if you want to see my full thoughts, go ahead and watch the Nervina review. And then while I'm talking about Anastasia Beverly Hills, I'll give you guys my review on the other new release that I tried from them this month, which was the new Dream Glow Kit. Surprisingly, I haven't really seen a ton about this new product on the market, probably because the Norvina palette came out and that kind of overshadowed everything else. But this is the newest installment to their Glow Kit line, and I really love the Anastasia Glow Kits. Probably one of my favorite highlighter formulas on the market. They're very, very blinding, very glowy, very intense highlighters. First of all, this outer packaging is beautiful. I'm not sure if this qualifies as holographic or just iridescent, but it's stunning. Brown cow, stunning! And then here are the beautiful shades. I am wearing one of them on my face today. I'm wearing the shade Magic, which is this kind of mint green slash pink duochrome shade. These are gorgeous, shifty, duochrome, colorful highlights. And personally, I really do love colorful highlighters. I know they're not really everyone's cup of tea, but I love them as an extra way to add some color into a look. Um, I wear them on the inner corners, on my face. I wear them pretty much everywhere, and obviously you can use them on your eyes as well. So even if you're not into wanting like purple highlight on your face, you can use them in so many other applications. These are a very glittery highlight, and I was super nervous when I first did my brush in there because I felt like there was so much glitter on my brush that it was just gonna look like a mess on my cheekbones. This is is almost like a wet looking sheen on your cheekbones and the more you buff it in with your brush the glitter kind of goes away and just melts into this beautiful like duochrome iridescent shift i don't think i've ever seen any kind of highlighter that replicates the effect this one gives it's very unique and i feel like if i saw someone wearing the dream glow kit i could probably tell that it was this so for that reason and for the unique effect this one gives i feel like if you already have the moonchild or the aurora glow kit this one wouldn't feel repetitive in your collection i love the anastasia glow kits this is not going to be a release for everyone especially people who don't like colorful highlighters or duochrome chrome highlighters or even like glittery highlighters, but I just really like it. I think it's a really pretty effect on the cheekbones, on the inner corners, on the eyes, just everywhere. In last month's episode of New Makeup Releases Favorites and Fails, I tried out like a bunch of concealers and foundations. It was a very complexion product heavy month. And this month I tried out a lot more eyeshadow palettes, but I do still have a really awesome concealer that has probably been my favorite discovery of the month. And that is the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. This has blown every concealer I own just straight out of the water. I did use this one in a Get Ready With Me recently where I tested out a bunch of new products. And this was a concealer I used. I will link that video in the cards above if you want to see how it performed on my face and wore throughout the day. First of all, this is a huge bottle. It's half an ounce of product, so you're getting almost like half the size of a standard foundation bottle, so much more than a typical concealer. Concealer is normally around 0.2 ounces, whereas this one is 0.5, so this is huge. That's what she said. <laughs> it is a very full coverage concealer, kind of in line with obviously Tarte Shape Tape, which is, I feel like, what they were going for. The only way I can really think of to describe this concealer is what 
people were saying about Tarte Shape Tape back in the day. Everyone was saying it was full coverage, stayed down all day, it didn't crease, it just looked perfect and weightless. It didn't even look like concealer, it just looked like you had perfect skin. Everything that people were saying about the Tarte Shape Tape, I feel like that's what this concealer actually is. I think Tarte Shape Tape was really good and it was probably the best thing back then, but now there's so many amazing new concealers on the market that I just think there's so many better options than Tarte Shape Tape. I just found as I wore it more and more often, even though Tarte Shape Tape was super full coverage, it didn't look like my skin. And this one, it does look like my skin, but it gives me that coverage that I want. I just feel like I haven't found a concealer that truly performs as well as this one does. I was so blown away when I tried this one out, and I haven't felt that wowed feeling in such a long time. So this was very impressive to me. It's $29. They don't have the best shade range. They could definitely fit to expand it as they did with their um, Born This Way foundation. But it's a start. I'm in the shade Almond, which is the same shade that I'm in in their foundation, and I've just been using this so often. <laughs> Okay, so the biggest disappointment of the month for me was the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. And I really want to love this one. The outer packaging is just gorgeous. I love the travel themed photographs on here. It's a really nice sleek packaging as well, so it's great for travel. You get a huge mirror in here as well, and the colors, it's just laid out in a way that I wouldn't really expect from Urban Decay. So I was very excited to try this one out, especially because there did seem to be a pretty nice variety of matte shades in here. Normally Urban Decay does like four matte shadows and 20 shimmer shadows, and then the matte shadows that they do have are like browns. So I was very excited to see that they had some nice colorful mattes in here, as well as some really fun shimmers. This could have been so good if the formula was up to par. The one shade that I was super, super excited about was this shade here called Hellride, which is a beautiful kind of berry tone purple shade. This was really, really patchy. It just didn't have that pigmentation that I wanted it to, especially what I would expect from a high-end shadow. It was hard to build up. When you blended it out, it just went patchy and kind of splotched. And I actually tried out a color that was very similar to this one in a cheaper palette that I'm gonna mention later in this video. But this one was really disappointing and it was the most exciting shade in the palette for me. Also, I just wanna note that while I only posted one look of this palette on Instagram, I've done many more. I just never felt like they were good enough to photograph or post. The other matte that really disappointed me was the shade here called Still Shot. This is a beautiful like coral toned matte, but it just wasn't packing that brightness and that punch that I wanted from a coral matte. Even if I built it up, it just wasn't bright. It, even if I built it up, it just felt super muted and it wasn't bright enough to a point where it was like, oh, that's the color in the pan. It just never showed up like that on my eyes. The only shade that really impressed me in here was the shade here called Baja. This is a beautiful matte orange. It built up, it had the pigmentation that it has in the pan, but still the disappointment from the two other really beautiful colorful mattes was just, mm. And then the colorful shimmers, as beautiful as they looked, they just kind of faded throughout the day. They weren't anything impressive. And honestly, it just, it didn't feel like a palette that I would pay the price that this palette's worth. It's definitely not the worst palette I've ever tried. At least it did blend, but it was just very disappointing to me. And since everyone was so excited about this one, I was really expecting something great. And I don't know, Urban Decay just kind of let me down. I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! I feel like they really just need to do something awesome. And I haven't found that from them yet. Probably the most exciting package that I opened this month was one that I got from Nalpa Cosmetics. I ordered a few things from their brand and these came from Europe, so it was very expensive to pay for shipping and everything. It cost an arm and a leg, but I was so excited to try things out, especially because this has been a brand that I've heard so many amazing things about, but it's been harder to get your hands on, especially if you're here in the US. Let me know if you would like to see some more European-based or UK-based brands on my channel, because I feel like the American brands get all the glory and I would love to shine some light on some other awesome indie brands that aren't local to here to the US but still create amazing products. I mean, I'm sure it'd be an expensive endeavor for me, but I'd be willing to do it if you guys want to see it. The first thing I bought from Nabla Cosmetics was the Dreamy Eyeshadow Palette. Let's be honest, this was the main thing that I purchased everything else for. I added on the other things because I did want to try those ones out, but I was in it for this palette and this palette alone. <laughs> I just live and die for this outer packaging. I love the celestial theme, all these beautiful stars on here. This is just so well thought out and so gorgeous. In here, you get a nice mirror as well. And then here is a beautiful color scheme and the gorgeous shadows. I'd heard amazing things about this palette, especially from Jay Kissa. She said she really liked this one and I trust her opinions so much. So I was very excited to try this one out, but I wasn't expecting to be so wowed and this formula is amazing. Again, I did use this palette in the Get Ready With Me where I tried out the Too Faced Concealer. So go ahead and watch that if you wanna see how these shadows performed. I did an eye look that was very intricate and I was so blown away with how well these performed. The matte shadows in here are soft, buttery, creamy, kind of a similar texture to the Anastasia Beverly Hill shadows. They're very pigmented and they blend effortlessly. However, they're not as powdery as Anastasia shadows. So if you really hate the powderiness of ABH's matte formula, I think you'd really enjoy the Nubble ones because they have that same just buttery smoothness. There's a lot of dimethicone in these ones, so they have that nice soft buttery feeling to the touch, but they don't have a lot of kick up to them and they just blend 
effortlessly. They're beautiful. And then the shimmers in here, this is one of the few formulas I've found that doesn't fade throughout the day. It has increased on me. I haven't had any problems with how these ones look. They genuinely just kind of stay the same that they looked when you first applied them on the eyes. So I don't think I'm gonna get the um, Soul Blooming palette, which is the other palette that they have because I heard some not so great reviews. And for me, a California girl, it is very expensive to get Nabla, so I don't wanna waste my money on something that's not gonna be good. But I am considering picking up some more single shadows from them because I've heard awesome things about their singles. So yeah, overall, I am so happy that I bought this palette. I'm very happy that I was able to try out the formula. This is probably one of my new like top 10 favorite eyeshadow formulas in my entire collection. I also decided to try out one of their newest releases, which is the Nabla Close Up Concealer. This obviously, we can tell what it's duping. It's obviously a dupe of the Tarte Shape Tape down to the pattern on the bottle. You also get this nice doe footed applicator. So it's very Shape Tape-esque. It has this really delicious like sweet dessert scent. I did use this one on camera in my um, Subscribers Choose My Makeup video, which you should go watch because it's kind of behind on views right now and it's making me a little bit sad. I spent like 16 hours editing that video, so go watch it. But in that video, I said this one kind of smelled like vanilla rum, maybe like whiskey. I don't know, it smells alcoholic, but like sweet and really, really good. I do like the Too Faced one a tiny bit more just because that one is like my new Holy Grail concealer, but this one is awesome. And in my opinion, it's better than Shape Tape, again. Like Shape Tape, it's very full coverage. It'll block out any darkness you have under your eyes. It blends very easily. The only thing I would say is it is a little bit wetter than Shape Tape, so you do need to go ahead and set it like directly after you blend it out. Otherwise, you might experience a bit of creasing if that is a problem for you. Otherwise, I think it's an awesome concealer. It's a great option if you want nice coverage. And yeah, it's really good. It wears very well throughout the day, and I love how this one works as well. So I'm in the shade Ivory. I probably could have gotten a shade down just because this one is pretty much the same color as my skin tone, whereas I would prefer to have something a bit lighter so I can get that highlighted effect. But overall, it's really, really nice. I've been using this one for under eyes and spot concealing, and it's just an awesome concealer. The final thing that I tried from Nabla was their Shade and Glow Contour Powder in the shade Gotham. This one, again, was a J Kiss a recommendation. She and I are very fair-skinned. She and I are both very fair-skinned. I think we're almost exactly the same, like, shade. She doesn't wear foundation, but we're pretty much, like, almost the same shade. So I always love trying out nice fair-toned contours. Gotham is a very pale shade, but Nabla does have quite a few different options for different skin tones, so you could go find one that would probably work for you. But just in general, I don't really love powder contours because I feel like they'll never look as natural on my skin as cream contouring does. But this one, it's such a light formula. It blends very, very easily on the skin, and for that reason, it does look very natural. So I don't think I've tried any contour powders that I really love besides this one and the Kevin Aquan one, but this is just beautiful for lightly sculpting out the face. It looks so natural on the skin and they really did a great job with the color I love that nice cool toned shade to kind of sculpt everything naturally It's a beautiful contour powder and I really enjoy this one as well All right, so Target recently rolled out a bunch of new indie brands So they have Makeup Geek, they have Colored Rain I think they have Violet Voss as well And then they also have a bunch of indie brands that I've never even heard of before So one of the things I was most excited to see was a new brand called Haley's This is their reset liquid matte foundation Again, I did use it in the Get Ready With Me But this, but Haley's is a cruelty free brand I believe this foundation is is vegan as well. Um, I'll have to double check on that one. But that's the Reset Liquid Matte Foundation comes in a bunch of different shades. They don't have the full range in Target stores. The full range is online, but I believe my Target had like 10 shades, which was not the best thing. I'd love to see them have the full range, but I don't know, limited space, I guess. In this beautiful like sleek bottle, which feels very like Illamasqua-esque, um, you're getting a full fluid ounce in here, which is a standard size for a foundation, and it's $20. This I would describe as a medium to full coverage foundation, and it has a really nice velvety matte finish. It's not super, super matte like the Fenty Beauty one, but it's not gonna be dewy either. It just gives you that nice, like almost natural look. It looks velvety smooth on the skin, and this one I felt like blurred out my imperfections and looked so, so good on my face. What I was even more impressed by was how this one wore throughout the day. It'd go on matte on the skin originally, but as my oils kind of came through throughout the day, again, I don't really have oily skin. I have very natural, just straight in the middle skin. So I do get a little bit oilier throughout the day. As I wore it throughout the day, as my oils kind of came through, it didn't look greasy. It didn't look super oily or anything. It just looked a little bit dewier. I'm thinking about doing a video of like my top favorite foundations, concealers, and primers. So if you'd like to see that, please let me know. Um, I just want to give you guys my favorites, but this would definitely qualify as like one of my top five favorite foundations at the moment. I really like this one and I think it's a really nice kind of mid-price foundation. Not super expensive, but not like drugstore either by any means. But I love this brand. I love what they stand for and I think this is a really awesome product as well. Ah, the new Shop Miss A releases. I did a full review on all the five new releases that they have, including the eyeshadow kits, the mascaras, the um, highlighter drops, the lip oils, and the contour sticks. 
So you can go watch that video because I'm not going to mention all the new releases in this video. I just want to mention some of my favorites. So first of all, the eyeshadow kits, which I was personally the most excited about. These are basically 10 pan eyeshadow palettes with beautiful color schemes for $10 each. Like, I don't know how Shop Missy makes money, but like, okay. We have the Love Child, which is a dupe of the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette. Wildflower, which is an amazing, like, kind of earth tone color scheme. Very similar, in my opinion, to the new I Love Sadahi Dose of Colors palette, which I'm really, really into. And then finally, the beautiful I'm a Beach palette. This is such a fun summery color scheme. Similar, in my opinion, to the Blue Honey palette from Kylie Cosmetics, as well as the new, um... Alamada Cosmetics Reina del Caribe palette, which is really beautiful as well. I included the looks that I did with these palettes in the review video, so you can go ahead and watch those ones, but I've really been enjoying these ones. I'm so like surprised by how good the formula is. I wasn't really expecting that much, I'll be honest. The mattes in here, they do need a little bit of building up because they are like $10 shadows, but once you build them up, you get a beautiful amount of pigmentation to them. They blend very easily as well, so I don't feel like bad building them up because I know they can blend out easily. And the shimmers in here are just dynamite. I, quality of ColourPop shimmers, if not better than that. So I'm really impressed with the quality of these and the color schemes. I feel like I would love to see like higher end brands coming out with awesome innovative color schemes like these ones because I feel like there's so much overlap and repeat in the beauty industry and in new releases that it's just so fun to see something very new and exciting. So if you don't like the color schemes of these palettes, there's a bunch of other options on their website as well with different color schemes. So you could probably find an eyeshadow kit that you would like, but I'm just saying the formula is a go for me and I really enjoy these ones a lot. So definitely very happy with these ones. Then another big standout from their releases that I wasn't really expecting was their mascaras. The fat lash mascaras, which are the ones for the top, are good, um, but I was really impressed with these skinny lash bottom lash mascara and this I've been using pretty much every single day since I tried it out first. I'd never really seen the purpose for using a separate bottom lash mascara. It just seemed like a waste of money and stupid to be honest but but these are a dollar each so I wouldn't really mind going out of my way to go purchase a separate one and on top of that this is awesome. This is a very like skinny little brush. It can go and get the very very small hairs on my inner corner. This has made my lashes look so lush on the bottom, really balancing out that effect because I do wear false lashes pretty much every single day. So you want to have something to kind of balance them out on the bottom and this is a really great way to do that. So I have been using this in conjunction with pretty much every mascara I own. I'm not even using it with the other Shop Missy mascaras. I've just been using this with like my Urban Decay version and then some other mascaras I've been trying out, which you'll see in next month's new makeup releases, favorites and fails the Kush mascara. But yeah, overall, if I could recommend any two products from the new releases to pick up from Shop Missy, the eyeshadow kits are an awesome pick, and then the lash mascara. Grande Cosmetics recently released their um, Grande Lips Hydro Plump Liquid Lipsticks and Lip Plumping Sets. I believe Grande Cosmetics is most famous for their Grande Lash Lash Serum, which is a like lash growing serum, I guess. Wow, great logic, Julia. But I feel like their kind of gimmick or aesthetic, whatever you want to call it, is like plumping and enhancing certain figures of like beauty on your face. So they have the Lash Growth Serum, they have these liquid lipsticks, which are a plumping formula. And I was very interested to try them out because I do overline my lips pretty much like most days. I don't want lip injections, but I like having that nice full lip effect and I wanted to see if I could get a product that could kind of replicate that instead of overlining my lips every day. You get a lip plumping primer, which you're supposed to apply underneath the liquid lipsticks. And then I have quite a few different shades of the liquid lipsticks. These are just two of the ones I own. I did get a few sent to me by Grande Cosmetics. I did get one sent to me um, through Octoly and then I did get a couple like purchased by myself. And that was after I figured out that I really do like the formula of these. It's a matte liquid lipstick and I have a lot of problems with different formulas from different brands. Like the Anastasia ones are way too drying for me. Most of the Kylie Cosmetics ones I just cannot do. So I haven't really found a ton of matte liquid lipsticks that I really love. I do like the Smashbox Always On, the Ofra liquid lipsticks, and um, the Fenty Beauty ones, but that's pretty much it. But these feel so light and comfortable on my lips. They're kind of a like moussey texture, but they pack such a nice amount of pigment to them that you can kind of get a nice thin layer of this moussey texture and it doesn't feel super drying on your lips. It doesn't crack throughout the day. It lasts very well. And just overall, really impressed with the formula of these ones. Did they plump my lips? No, I didn't really notice anything and I did end up overlining my lips later. I also have the Grande Stay Put Lip Liner, which is a clear lip liner that you're supposed to put on the outside of your lips. This will kind of prevent the liquid lipstick from moving around or feathering throughout the day. This is very impressive and I've been using this with some other liquid lipstick formulas, particularly the Fenty Beauty Stunna Lip Paint, which I find can kind of get a little bit of feathering, especially up here. Um, and this is really good for preventing that. So if feathering is a problem for you, this is awesome. I gotta mention the new Decorative Scarlet Edition number no. nine palette. This was created by the beautiful Belle Jordan, who's one of my favorite beauty YouTubers. I've mentioned this palette a 
couple times here on my channel, but I just want to give you guys my final thoughts on the entire collection because it's awesome and it's going away in about a month. So every two months, Decker Scarlet comes out with a new palette. This one I think is my favorite one that they've ever done. This is a beautiful like purple themed color scheme, which we've seen going around the beauty community very often. The lip colors down here are really pretty, um, but the main star of the show obviously are the powder products for me at least. This is the aforementioned purple that performed even better than the one in the Urban Decay Born to Run. This was so good, very even in pigmentation and it blended super easily. You get this gorgeous like iridescent purple shade here as well. Like get out of town, that is gorgeous. And I'm fully obsessed with the two cheek products in here. I use the highlight and the blush in the Get Ready With Me that I mentioned like four times in this video already. But this blush color here is like a dusty mauve wine shade. It is so beautiful in the cheeks. It's just this gorgeous color. It is so gorgeous on the cheeks. It has a really beautiful amount of pigmentation to it and it doesn't like fade throughout the day. So that's awesome. The palette also comes with a mascara and this whole set is $29.95. So I think it's a great deal. The mascara is nice. It's not the best mascara I've ever tried. It's just like pretty middle of the road for me, just decent. So not my favorite mascara in the world, but I'm just more excited about the fact that it is Deck of Scarlet's first mascara. Every palette that they release comes with like an extra thing like this one. So they recently did a lip gloss and now they're kind of branching out into new things and I'm very excited to see that. So this is okay. It's not the best mascara ever, but the palette is the main star of the show for me and I really like it. So I definitely think this is worth every penny of the $29.95 and I just want to support Bella. I think she did an amazing job with this one. I haven't been altering my skincare routine that much recently. I found just awesome products that really work for me, so. But one thing I have added in is this release from Saturday Skin. This is the Rub-A-Dub Refining Peel Gel. This is a cruelty-free line at Sephora, I believe. And this is basically like a cleansing gel that you put onto your skin. You kind of rub it around and you slowly see like little pilling of white stuff. That's dead skin cells. It's so fun to watch. And then this I found is a really great cruelty-free straight up dupe of the Bosha um, Exfoliating Peel Gel, which Bosha is not cruelty-free, which is, I don't understand why. I feel like more botanical-based brands like that. You, people just assume that they are cruelty free, but for some reason, Bosha tests on animals. So this is an awesome option. You're getting quite a bit of product in here. And I've been using this pretty much every other night to kind of just buff away all the dead skin cells. It just kind of takes away all the dead skin cells and makes my face super smooth. And I find that that creates a really good base for makeup. Remember, you can be an awesome makeup artist, but your base is only going to look as good as the skin that's underneath it. So finally, I'm going to finish off the video with some stuff from Makeup Revolution. They're a brand that I really wanted to dabble into a bit more, but I haven't really known where to start. So they have a lot of products. They kind of got famous originally for doing dupes of other brands' products. So they duped a lot of um, Urban Decay palettes, Kat Von D, Lorac. And now they're kind of doing their own thing, creating their own innovative color stories and their own concepts, which I really do enjoy. They are also a UK-based brand, so a lot of their new releases kind of come to the US very later. And these are two things that I just recently got in my Ulta that just came. So first, the Makeup Revolution Fast Base Foundation Stick. This, I am, I am in the shade F2. You get a pretty decent amount of product in here. It's just your standard stick foundation. This one was just kind of underwhelming to me. I really love the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation and I feel like that one truly does vanish into the skin. I'm wearing it today, but it doesn't sit on top of the skin, whereas this one, it doesn't truly blend into the skin as that one does. And it was also pretty wet, so it didn't look natural on my skin and it didn't feel like it was going to be super secure. And at this point in the beauty community, I feel like there's so many amazing products out there that when something kind of falls into the mediocre category, I just immediately write it off as like not worth my time. So this one, I just felt like it was kind of meh. It's not the worst foundation I've ever tried, but it's not the best either. And then finally, I tried out the Soph X palette from Makeup Revolution. You get 24 shades in here. And this was created in collaboration with Soph Does Nails, who is a UK-based beauty YouTuber. I do watch a few of her videos every now and then. You're getting some really nice shades in here, but I was more concerned about the formula itself. And I will say, these are not the most pigmented shadows. You do have to build them up a bit, kind of like the Shot Miss A ones, because they are so affordable. This is a $15 palette. So I did have to build them up a bit more to get that color that was in the pans, but they do blend pretty easily. They do build on themselves, and they don't really get muddy if you add too many colors. So I did appreciate that. So despite having to work a little bit harder with them, I do appreciate the fact that they did layer well. I love this bronzy shade here called Grow Old. It's just a gorgeous shimmer shade. I just felt like everything in here performed really nicely throughout the day. Definitely makes me want to try more from Makeup Revolution. So I'm planning on picking up her Soph Extra Spice palette, which is her second collaboration with them. But yeah, I definitely do want to try out some more Makeup Revolution and you'll probably see them later on my channel. And with that, that concludes my new makeup releases, favorites and fails for July. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed down below and make sure you're also following me on Instagram to see makeup looks like this one posted every single day. I love you all so much. Thank you for making July an awesome month for me. We hit 
5,000 subscribers, which is not a huge number by any means, but it means the whole world to me. I will have to kind of slow down in August because my semester is starting back up again. So I won't be able to do kind of like the every other day uploading that I've been doing this summer. I do know that I will be sticking to at least the bare minimum of one video a week. That is my bare minimum. I will not go more than one week without uploading. I'm gonna try to do two, maybe even three videos a week. We'll see what my schedule looks like and if I can fit it in there, but I will continue to work hard for you guys because I do love creating videos here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Bear with me. I hope you guys will stick around. And if you made it to the very end of this video, I love you.